Do you know in a recent survey, 80% of people recorded not following their dreams because they didn't have the money to do so. In fact, the lack of money is often the root of people's unhappiness, at least as they would describe it. But weren't we told that money can't make you happy? Or were we actually lied to? And it's the way we manage money that makes us unhappy. Not knowing how to manage your budget and save more money might be costing you a whole lot more happiness than you know. In this video, I'm gonna give you five ways to start managing your money so you have more money at the end of the month and it allows you the freedom to start saving money so you can see that money growing every single month in your bank account. The first thing you need to do to manage your money well and save more money is to count every single dollar, both the money that comes in and the money that goes out, how much you make and how much you spend. And then we wanna line up the difference. We wanna see how far in front of our spending is our earning or is our earning trailing behind and we don't have money really to save because we're spending more than we earn. If we're spending more than we earn, we have to start seeing where we can cut to get those numbers closer together and eventually allow our earning to get out in front of our spending. That's when saving happens. Can't really save if you got lots of debt and you're spending more than you're earning. I have found that people need to earn about 1.25 times the amount of money they spend in order to feel comfortable. So if they spend $10, they need to earn about $12.50 in relationship to their earning. That gives people a little bit of cushion to feel like they aren't spending all their money, they have a little bit to save, and they have a little bit extra in case an emergency happens. The goal is to get your earning 1.25 times in front of your spending so we're never spending more than we earn. You've got to count every dollar. Most people don't do this. Most people aren't willing to go through the hard work of looking at how much they spend, looking at how much they make, and really seeing the difference and facing the facts. Facts are our friends. They tell us the truth. They don't care if I had a bad day. They don't care what my feelings are. They just tell me the truth. And in our finances, we need a truth teller. We need somebody saying, hey, you spent more money at Target this month than most villages make in a year. The truth is we just need to change it up a bit. We need to scale back on the knickknacks from Target. I mean, who needs those things? But that place gets expensive. So the truth is we wanna make sure we're spending behind our earning, especially if we wanna start saving. There's an app called YNAB. Y-N-A-B, you need a budget. It's an app that costs a little bit of money, costs $84 a year, $12 a month. It's a great little app that will help you track all your expenses, track your earning, so that you can at the end of every month see, here's where we landed this month. Here's where we landed this month. And after three or four months, you can kind of see a trajectory and see where you're really at and you can start making adjustments. It's really hard to do it after one month. You need a little bit of trajectory so you can see what's the real average. If you live in a place where it snows, your utility bills are gonna be a lot higher in January than it is in July. So you need a scale of a few months to kind of see where your expenses land so you can really see how much you need to make. The second thing you wanna to do to manage your money well and save money, make saving an expense. What does that mean? That means on your expense list when you list your utilities and your mortgage payment and your gas and your food, you list savings. Allow savings to be part of your expense list. What this will do is it will train you to see savings as something you have to pay every month. Because you'll never think about not paying your utility bill because they'll shut your gas off, they'll shut your electric off. Well, let's think about that in the savings world that we save no matter what. Make savings an expense. 20% of your income in savings is the goal. But a lot of people aren't there. You're not out far enough of in front of your spending to be able to save that. If you make $5,000 a month, start with 5%. Put $250 a month into savings, but make it an expense on your budget so you don't see it as an option. See, people that don't budget for savings or budget for giving and contribution, it just doesn't happen. Because often in our finances, money is like water in a fire. It just goes to where the fire is. It just puts out fire, 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 and it's never really building anything. And that's what we want to shift. We want you to see savings as an expense so you don't just write it off and never do it. So put savings on your expense list. Another thing you can do with savings is make it automatic. My wife and I do this. Anytime money hits our account, at the end of the month, it automatically transfers a preset amount per month. Let's say we have it set at $500. Every single month, boom, $500 is moved over to another account, to our savings account. Every single month, whether we do it or not, we automate it, that way it's not a decision. I want you to have to earn past 
great money habits. So you might be saying, Mike, I don't have the money to do that. Then we have an earning problem. We need to go fix that problem. We have to manage what we have well. Then we have to go make more so that we can manage more. But the truth is, have it automatic so you don't have to think about it. It just goes into the account instantly. The third thing in order to manage and save is you gotta cut spending. We wanna cut spending so that we can get the fat off of our financial diet. Because cutting financial calories gives way more room at the end of a month for a cheat meal. The idea is if you wanna go out and have a good night and have a date night with your spouse or your partner and you wanna go and have some fun with the kids, then save for that. Cut in order to have that. Cut the fat off your diet so you can invest that into really highly financial nutrition so you can see your financial picture continue to grow. See, a lot of people waste their money every month and then complain that they don't have any. Well, let's cut all the fat off and use every dollar for really high nutrition. I use this example. My wife's a naturopathic doctor and she's always talking about caloric density. It's the idea from what you eat you can eat a lot more calories if you're eating great food because your body can actually use the calories. You go and eat a Big Mac, can't use a lot of that calorie, so it just stores it in fat. It's the same way with the finances. If you trim all the fat off your finances and money isn't going towards streaming services you never use and cars you don't drive, you have a lot more money to put into real life nutrition so you can go have experiences with your families and kids. I look at cutting expenses in both unneeded and needed items. For example, needed items are cars and car insurance, utility bills, things like that. I always call all of those needed providers in order to see if I can get a better deal. I'll call my car insurance. Do you have any better plans in order to lower my rate? Or I'll start shopping my insurance to other insurance companies and see if somebody else can give me a better rate. Shop your insurance. Shop every single provider you use in order to see if they can offer you a better deal. Call your cell phone provider, see if they have a better plan available. I literally called my company one time and asked them if I could get unlimited data. I only had a few gigs of data every single month. As, as I was using my phone more and more for business, I was always over that data and it was costing me more money. And I called them and said, I'd like to upgrade to unlimited data. They had a plan that was cheaper than my phone plan for unlimited data. I saved like $20 a month and got unlimited unlimited data, which ended up saving me about $40 a month. And if you can do that throughout your expenses, again, I'm cutting fat. You know what? I'm getting no more value out of paying more money on my phone bill. In fact, with the new change, I'm getting a lot more value by paying less. And all it took was a phone call. Call all your providers, see if you can get a little bit better deal. The other thing is you might own every streaming service out there. You own Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and Amazon Prime, and you use only some of them here and there. Pick one, use it, cut the rest. That's another $30 a month you just saved that can go towards at the end of the year, $360. That's a great weekend away with your spouse. That's a great something you can invest in of real value. I found that in a lot of financial pictures, money goes to place in which we never actually experience the value of what we're paying for. Let's cut the financial fat so we're only spending money on things we value and use. Before I go on to the last few tips, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get more tips on how to save money, how to make money, and how to build a life of financial freedom. So subscribe to our channel, join our family, and let's all take the ride towards financial freedom. The fourth thing is set a savings goal for every single month. Again, most people don't set goals so they never reach them. What's your saving goal? Maybe you wanna save $500 a month so at the end of the year, you have $6,000 in your savings account. Or you wanna save $100 a month and you have 1,200 at the end of the year to go on a vacation or whatever, but set the goal because some months you won't hit it and some months you will. The idea is if you shoot for the moon, you land among the stars. Let's say you shoot for $100 a month, but you're only able to save $50 a month. Well, great, you've built the practice, but without the goal, you never really get to the end and the finish line. So let's set a savings goal that you feel comfortable with that will also make you feel very successful if you hit. Don't set a goal that you know you can achieve. Set a goal you have to work to achieve and you have to become somebody better and a better financial steward in order to reach that goal. And the goal is to get that monthly savings number to keep going up. And what I've found is eventually you get your expenses to a point where you really can't cut it down too much more. You cut it down and you're pretty much there. Okay, you've cut all the fat off your finances. Now it's time to build muscle. 
and that's called earning. We want to go out and create a side hustle, go get a better job, increase our income and really spend some time focusing on how to earn more money. There is a great opportunity right now in the United States of America to go get a job and earn more revenue no matter what industry you're in. And so again, continue to grow. You might need to learn a new skill to make more money. Okay, great. Spend some time learning that skill and then apply that to your finances so you can get a better job or start a business, start an e-commerce store, start something that can continue to generate revenue. After we've cut the fat, it's time to build muscle. My trainer used to say, you don't want to be on a bulk diet when you want to cut fat from your diet. You want to get all the fat off your body, then muscle builds that much faster. And it's the same thing for our finances. You want to cut that fat off, then earning happens so much easier because we don't have to worry about keeping the bills paid. Tip number five is to prepare for the day. Now, what is the day? The day is when you're standing in line or you're at the mall and you're about to deviate from the decisions you've made ahead of time. You're about to go out to eat and you've agreed you're only going to go out to eat once this month and you've already gone out to eat, but you're about to go out to eat again just because the buddies are going out. You're in the moment of decision. You need to prepare for what you're going to do in that moment. Because the truth of the matter is, if you've made decisions, it's really important to stick to those decisions because not sticking to them is what got you here in the first place. And so we have to stick to those decisions so we can actually move forward. There's going to be a day you want to buy the golf clubs, you want to go out to eat, you want to buy the purse, you want to buy the new shoes, but you just have to not say no, you just have to say not yet. And tell your brain that. We're going to get it, just not yet. We're going to get it in just a little bit because I have some really specific focuses for our finances right now and that'll come. We'll get that for sure, but it's just not today. I just don't want to do it today. In fact, I tell everybody when you're about to make a purchase above $100 in a store, make one more lap around the store, go out, get a drink, something, just make sure that you really want that thing. And I can tell you, my wife and I, by living by that principle, I want to buy that. We'll just take one more lap around. We'll go do something else for just a minute and realize, let our brain get off the emotional roller coaster of wanting it. And sometimes we buy it, sometimes we don't. But it's just having a barrier in between your emotions and your decisions. And the idea here is make sure you prepare for the day when you don't want to deviate from those plans, making sure you either have an accountability partner or a way to bring you back to reality and get you cemented in the decisions you've made. Also, I want you to master what we call our money formula. It's our 70-10-10-10 formula. 70% goes to your needs, 10% goes to savings, 10% goes to giving, and 10% goes to investments. And the idea is that when you set your life up that structured, when I see 70%, I actually like to try to squash that down to 60 so I can throw 10% into another category of my choosing. But the truth is, this gives you a good framework to understand if you have these four buckets, it gives you some discipline for what to do with your money. This goes to what we need, this goes to giving, saving, and investing. And those four buckets will really structure your finances in a way that will set you up to succeed. And I also want to give you a free book I wrote called The Seven Secrets of Managing Your Money and Creating Wealth. Go in the description, click that link, and the free book is yours. I'll see you in the next video.